you may have already chosen to use a walking cane for self-defense or you're considering it, you're researching it, I wanna show you the different techniques you can use for self-defense so that you can discover for yourself what is the best move for self-defense, the best self-defense move with a walking cane. Grab your cane, follow me. This is a workout and a discussion. You're gonna start with a very simple warm-up spin, and this is the first kind of move, self-defense move, that you will see when you research using a walking cane for self-defense, or how do you defend yourself with a walking cane? Can you defend yourself with a walking cane? I always say the answer is absolutely yes. You're gonna find out why. You start with this basic spin coming over and back. This is a self-defense move that you will see taught by a lot of cane masters, American uh, cane self-defense, cane masters, canes, that's what this is, uh, cane foo. You see it in all styles of cane self-defense, Hapkido cane, and it is basic combat spinning. You're going over and back. I teach it to you because I want you to be able to warm up your body in a way that you don't get injured during the workout. So this spinning for me has more to do with developing the callus on your hand, getting the blood to flow through your body. You can do this standing and you can do this seated. And when you ask yourself the question, what is the best cane self-defense move or what cane self-defense move is the best for you? It's going to be depending upon whether you're standing or sitting. You might be in a chair. You might be sitting in a chair because you're waiting on a bus or you're at the train station, you're getting ready to board the plane, or you might be in a wheelchair. You might use your cane for mobility more than someone else does. And since it's a mobility device, you might rely upon it to stand up more. So the de different techniques, the techniques are gonna vary for self-defense. What's gonna work better for you, seated, might not work as well for somebody else, or what works well standing, doesn't work as well seated. And you can do all the techniques. You can do this cane spinning. This is the first technique I want you to consider when you think about what self-defense move is best with the walking cane. And you see here, you can do this combat cane spinning that you find in cane master's training videos, that you find in American Cane Systems of Self-Defense, that you find in uh, Cane Fu or Hop Keto Cane. You can do a standing, you can do a seat, seated. It works in all those cases. So is that the best self-defense move? And we're gonna talk, we're gonna, I'm gonna go through all of them very quickly, and then you're gonna decide what's best for you. Because it's gonna be very person dependent, very individually dependent. And that's a good news, right? You can pick the thing that's gonna work for you the best and then practice that over and over and over again. Also be aware of other techniques that might work. The second move that I want you to see after this basic cane spinning is thrusting with your cane using the cane to create a lot of distance between yourself and the threat. You can get into this position very quickly. It's in my back hand. The threat is here. We're going to call the bag of the threat. I simply turn my hand up and I push straight forward. As I'm looking at the target, I can step in and now I can create a massive amount of force concentrated on the very end of this long piece of hard oak. Maybe yours is oak, maybe you can also get this Cane Master's cane made for you in hickory, which is even stronger, or maybe you have a metal cane, or you have one of those hard, unbreakable canes. From here, just bring it to the hand when it's in this position, step and thrust. The key is not lifting the arms, but keeping it right here. Now, if you're seated in a wheelchair, can you, we're gonna turn your chair, can you use the thrust for self-defense? The answer is absolutely yes. Simply put or aim it and then push. From here, if you can lean, you can lean forward a little bit and I can tell you that I'm able to generate a lot of force and push it through the middle of their body. Here's another reason why this works so effectively for cane self-defense. Your target, you're using the tip here on the thrust your target is gonna be something you can remove or destroy for self-defense. Their ability to see, breathe temporarily, permanently. Their ability to stand upright, breathe, going into the solar plexus, going a little bit lower between the belly button and the private parts, anywhere along that line. And the key is it's soft tissue. That's hard wood against soft tissue. So it doesn't have to be hard as you can swing power strike that you might not be able to generate if you're in a chair 
or depending on your situation, maybe you're in a closed space, you're in your apartment, or you're coming out of your apartment or your house in the morning, and you're right there in the foyer, it's a very small space and it's dark, and there's somebody here, and before you realize it, they're on top of you, you don't have the ability to do the big swinging motions, you can easily stick it through them if you're aiming for soft tissue, and that's how it works. Think hard to soft, hard tip to the soft, fleshy nose or the teeth. You're gonna knock down his throat for self-defense or in through that cartilage. It doesn't take a lot of pounds of pressure to break that and they asphyxiate and die for self-defense. You're able to defend yourself. So from a seated position, standing position, and I saw the comment about seated and the hook. We're gonna talk about those different techniques. The first one, what is the best self-defense move using your walking cane? The answer is it could be spinning, combat cane spinning. That was the first one I demonstrated. And, and the answer is gonna be depending upon what works best for you because all of our situations are different. But that's what makes cane self-defense so powerful, so effective, and so accessible to so many of us is that it doesn't matter where you are, what your strength level is, what your fitness level is, how old, how young, how abled, how disabled, you're able to maximize your power because you can put your hands on it. You're able to strike with a hard piece of wood and sometimes that big nasty tooth. We're gonna to talk about that. You can hit with this big knuckle or that big hammer. You can come in with two hands. You can come in with two hands this way. You can move sideways to sideways. We'll talk about those in just a minute, but they're all going to depend upon what works best for you. The third technique I want you to consider is this jabbing motion with that knuckle. Think of this as a hammer or a fist. From this position, you can have this turned so that the tip is facing away from you or the crook is facing out and you can pop it straight out. Now in this or position, you can say very verbally, back up, you're too close, and then simply jab. Think about jabbing in. Think about a boxer, right to the nose, right to the throat, right to the solar plexus. Remember, hardwood, soft tissue, right into the groin, right into the private parts, or coming around, hooking into the temple, into the jaw, into the neck, into those ribs, and all that thin muscle and that thin fascia right there, and then into the body here, into the hips, into that sciatic nerve. If you're sitting in this chair, he's about to jump on top, you're able to hook or thrust and it's the same thing. If you're in a chair or you're sitting on the bench, you're waiting for the bus, you're waiting for the tr uh, train, minding your own business, some street thug, punk, uh, whatever comes up to invade your space, take something from you like your life, your dignity, your freedom, your health, you get your hands up. Back up, you're too close. And then very quickly, you can jab, you can hook, you can take the other side, this big nasty tooth, and stick it and rip the skin, literally, off of their face. Rip through that muscle. If you're using one of these Cane Masters canes, I put a link below if you wanna see what these look like. Almost all of them come with a beveled edge though, and I can tell you, that's not going anywhere, and that hard wood against soft tissue does a lot of damage for self-defense. That's the purpose of it, that's why it's there. You're able to strike this way, bring it back the other way. These so far are all one-handed techniques. The spin is a one-handed technique, right? This thrust starts as a one-handed technique. I like to teach the thrust in many ways. From here, thrusting here, but I really like it when you simply stick it right in their midsection and get two hands on it. And then you're in this position. From this position, you can easily turn and get that second hand on it and now come down like you're chopping a piece of wood, chopping a tree down which is the third kind of technique, which are these slashing or chopping techniques, almost as if you were using a sword. Think of basic sword fighting, right? Thrusting, we already went over that one, but you can slice down at different angles. You can come across vertically or horizontally, come down vertically. You can come up horizontally or come up diagonally, down diagonally vertically, I keep saying switching vertical and horizontal, but I think you're with me, but I'm coming through. And that's just with one hand. I can put the other hand on it and increase strength, 
speed and power and even switch my hand position. Switching it almost as if I were using the walking stick or the Japanese Joe for self-defense. Now I can come through here, I can come through here, I can turn it and strike through, again using that big nasty tooth, that hook for self-defense. You have so many things that you can do. So what is the best self-defense technique using a walking cane or the best self-defense move with a walking cane? The first one that I offered that you could learn from or think about is this combat cane spinning. There are a lot of ways to do it. I personally choose this for warming up the body, engaging the core, teaching spatial awareness, timing and distance. I don't use it for self-defense. The second, but you can. I'm not saying it's not the right one for you. This is what's so important about self-defense. Find the right technique for you. Not necessarily cookie cutter. It's never cookie cutter. Your situation is different than mine. We're all a little bit different. I have strengths, you have strengths. Find your strength and go with it. Number two is that simple thrusting motion. You can thrust from here. You can have the crook facing out. You can snap it up under his legs, between the legs, maybe come up under the chin, but then get in that hand and there's that thrust. Maybe you get in this position, back up, you're too close, and then you thrust. So thrusting, that's the second technique. The third technique was using the crook or the hook in a jabbing motion or a hooking motion. Thinking about a boxer using one hand to start, then get the other hand on it. And then the next type of technique, uh, cane self-defense move, are these slashes or chops. Thinking about a sword, a machete, a collie stick, a scream of our niece, basic techniques or maybe an Irish shillelagh fighting with an Irish fighting stick using these quick explosive striking motions coming to the front down um, at an angle think about diagonal just basic moves then putting your hand on it this is one of my favorites for self-defense might not be the best one for you but it can be used is powerful for a lot of people, right? I was teaching someone this morning this particular technique and we had to stress test it. And stress testing is when I say, I'm coming at you, right? <laughs> sometimes I put a little bit of padding on, but sometimes I don't because I can move with it or roll with it a little bit. This person this morning was so fast, so explosive and caught me off guard and <clears throat> comes in real quick and just in the nick of the time, I get, or nick of time, I'm moving back so I don't get hit, don't lose an eye but it's basic boxing moves, right? Punching right and left. Same as coming through with elbows for self-defense. One of your best, most powerful techniques you can do if you have nothing in your hand or throw some elbows. Now imagine the stick or your elbows, you're coming to the side, and you're coming down and you're coming up and coming up, right? If someone gets you in close and your hands are all locked up, you can always throw that elbow up under the chin or into the body, they almost never expect it. Same thing's true with this. You're in tight, you're confined space. You get somebody who jumps on top of you and you're trying to push them off, you're gonna lose. Instead, turn, turn. They're, they're pushing this way, they're coming this way. It catches most people off guard. Like I said, I, I stress test, I'm pushing, pushing. This person's trying to push me back this morning. And I said, you're not gonna win this fight. What else can you do? Do you remember the boxing, the elbows, the idea of using this leverage because two hands are on your cane and all of a sudden this came and that's where I almost took it, right in the chin, right in the eye. You have to be able to turn your body and you're very strong and you can do this. Um, David asked if I've done the self uh, chain self-defense. No, David, I cannot find a chain. I can buy a chain at the hardware store, but honestly, David, I'm really busy right now and I, don't, I haven't been able to find or buy the chain. I think I have a chain in the back, but I haven't done that, but I will. I promised you I'll do a chain self-defense. I will do a chain self-defense. Um, Shannon says, she's in <laughs> Facebook jail. Do I post on Instagram? I do not. I avoid Instagram. I avoid, uh, I, I used to post a lot on Facebook, just like these kinds of videos. I don't consume Facebook. I don't like to look at it, but I used to put a lot of stuff on it. And, um, I just, I just don't, I mean, I like it as a stock, but I don't, I don't, uh, 
I don't, I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand how to use it effectively. Every time I try, I kind of fall short. So from here, I want to go back to what happens if you're in a wheelchair or you're waiting on the bus or whatever, and you're in this position and they're coming down and you're, you're pushing, you're trying to get them off. You're not able to do this, but you're able to do this. Almost everybody can. Try it, right? Just try, test it. And again, you don't have to hit 500 miles an hour. You don't have to have the same power you had when you were 19 if you had a lot of power then. What you need to do is understand you're gonna let the wood, the hard, uh, maybe yours is metal, maybe yours is that uh, hard plastic, but you're gonna let that do the work. And see, when I'm turning here, I'm no longer just pushing with my arm muscles. If you can do a lot of push-ups, you'll have strong arms, but that's never enough. You'll have a strong chest, that's not enough. You need strong core, belly and back muscles. That gives you so much more power, and because of the way you're turning, it's going to push them off, and then you're gonna break, go right through the jaw, go through the eye, go through the neck for self-defense. So what is the best self-defense move with a walking cane? Is it combat cane spinning? Again, like you're gonna find in Cane Master's videos, you're gonna find combat cane spinning in American Cane Self-Defense Master Gary Hernandez. Uh, it doesn't teach a lot of combat cane spinning. I think he and I feel about the same way about it. It's a good warm up, but it's not necessarily something that we use or teach for self-defense, but we teach it because it's so good for proprioception and strength and hand balance coordination, all that. And then um, cane foo. Cane foo is becoming very popular again. Cane foo, there's a lot of cane. The two gentlemen from Great Britain, um, Masters of Cane, cane ma is it Masters of Cane? I think so, <laughs> something like that. Those guys, they're very funny, they're fun to watch. They teach a lot of cane spinning for self-defense. And um, I know a lot of other systems do too. I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm saying it's different, right? So the other, the second technique was basic thrusting between me and you. I like this one a lot because I always like to, if I can, create distance between myself and the threat. I don't know if he's got a knife, right? I don't know if this thug punk, this person who is trying to take something from me, my dignity, my life, my health, my freedom, hurt the people that I care about who might be with me. Maybe it's multiple attackers or someone with a knife. I don't know what they've got. I don't know their intention, but I do want to keep some distance. And I can get this up and just say, hey, you're too close. Very quickly, I can get the other hand on it. Or if I don't have time, I can thrust and then get the hand on it, thrust two or three more times, like a bayonet attack in the military. Those are, that's why they use them. It's so effective and simple. I can turn it around, come from a rifle butt, rifle butt strike, right? Very simple, very effective. Those are all thrusting motions. And then you have the hook centered motions, the jabs, the hooks this way, the raking motion, getting the other hand on it very quickly. Now you can slash coming at the angle, chopping. You can do a one-handed, you can do a two-handed, you can change your hands. Those are very powerful techniques. Are those the best self-defense move with the walking cane? And again, the answer has to be your answer and it's gonna change all the time. Here's the key that puts it all together, that helps you make that decision. What's the best self-defense move with the walking cane? Is it a thrust, is it a spin, is it a jab, is it a slash? Or is it a shove? And I, I got all caught up showing you my favorite elbows that I forgot to show you that one because just blasting someone, letting the wood do the work against the nose, against the teeth, against the throat is very effective. Then box their ears, right? Go for the jaw, go for that knockout, turn off their operating system. Lights out, let the cops come and sweep them up. You have so many options for self-defense. It comes down to what can you remove or destroy. If you go back and you look at the principles of self-defense that I always teach, the first principle, situational awareness, pay attention to what's happening as it's happening. Right now, what's happening around you? Where's the threat? Look close first. You walk out your door in the morning, you pay attention. You look at what's close to the ground. Maybe there's somebody hiding behind a planter, hiding behind a bush, behind the back of a car. Then you look up across the street, down the hallway, um, you know, seeing the threat. Someone way down there, something catches your eye, something doesn't feel right, you trust your instinct. Number two, after situational awareness, is getting a better position. When you can, put the cane between you and the threat. Create distance, make them work around your cane. Take control of the self-defense situation. You take control. 
you're gonna feel that nervousness, that tightness of your chest. So take a deep breath. Speak up for yourself, back up. You don't have to like me, but you can't come any closer. Stay away from me. Then, if you have to, you start to immediately assess what targets, and I do this all the time, whether I have to or not. It's, I think it's a good exercise for you. You say, what can I remove or destroy? You go into a situation, you think, if this person were to attack me, and I had to get in a better position, what targets can you remove or destroy? And you're talking specifically about the ability for them to see you or to breathe temporarily or permanently through the throat, right? Their ability to stand upright and breathe going through the solar plexus. Their ability to grab you, breaking these joints, striking with this hard piece of oak or hickory. Maybe you've got this cane master's cane and hickory, but you strike any of the joints. You go for the joints next, right? Or maybe you're going down to the legs, your ability to kick you or run after you or chase you, their ability to hold on to you or grab you or stab you with a knife. You're looking at those targets. You take a deep breath, make that quick mental assessment, and then you're ready to go. And then you have to go all in. Every strike is hard and as fast as you can, and you build your confidence by practicing. Get yourself, you don't have to have a bag. If you don't have a bag, don't use a bag, right? Um, someone said to me last night, or today, I was teaching this morning after the self-defense, then I was at the school, and the kids, uh, I said, get a drink of water, and the kids said, I don't have water. And I said, if you don't have a water bottle, don't get a drink of water. I know that sounds oversimplified, but sometimes people say, well, I don't have a bag, I don't have a stack of tires, I don't have a tree wrapped in foam, what can I do? And I said, well, don't hit it. If you don't have it, don't hit it. Strike the air. But don't let that be an excuse. And again, I know that's oversimplification, but understand what I'm trying to say is that a lot of times we fight for reasons not to do something. We look for it, right? And when you look for something, you find it. If you look all over for reasons why you can't do this, you're going to find as many as you keep looking for. If you look for one reason why you can, maybe you are in a wheelchair, maybe you, you don't have strength in your legs anymore. You f look for that one reason why you can, and then you fight for that. Fight to keep going, don't fight to quit. Fight to win, don't fight to give up, right? It's a fight, and your brain has the ability to go one way or the other way. Look for all the reasons you can't, or look for one reason you can, and just fight for it and hold on to it. Um, yeah, it is, Shannon, it is muscle memory. Good point. The last couple nights I've been working with a gentleman who has uh, short-term memory loss. I've had many experiences teaching students like that before. I had a brother who suffered with that from the time he was a year older than me from the time he was like, uh, I think it was his accident was in, when he was about 21, uh, traumatic brain injury, and struggled, just got so frustrated. And these, these people that I work with now, and ones I've worked in the past, their, their muscles, as you said, Shannon, Shannon their muscles remember, their, your body remembers. You do things over and over enough, and then you get your head out of the way. If you start thinking about why you can't, oh, I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forget it. I forget everything. You know, I, I know I have this, I know I have this uh, TBI. I know I have this brain injury. I'm gonna forget it. Don't try to remember it here. Understand that your body remembers it here. I believe that with the core of my being. I've seen that over and over and over again. So many times that I worked with, you name it. I've been doing this so long. I've worked with so many students, with so many challenges. In all challenges, there's always a workaround, right? There's always a solution. And that's, that's, my, that's my point. If you fight, if you look for, if you search for the reason you can do something, you're going to find it. If you look for all the reasons that you can't do something, you're going to find it. So watch what you're looking for. Watch what you're asking for. Watch what you're praying for. Watch the words that are coming out of your mouth or circulating in your head and change them. Turn the volume down. Instead of saying, well, I know I have this and I won't be able to do that, say, I'm going to do this. It's important to me. That's the only reason I need. It's important to me. And then, or whatever your reason is. And then go for it. Find, it. find a solution. I guarantee you, you'll fight, you'll struggle. And because you fight and because you struggle, and because you struggle harder than most people who don't have a brain injury, who don't have a limitation, who are not stuck in a wheelchair, your growth is going to be greater. Your reward is going to be greater. Your ability is going to grow greater and greater. As long as you don't give up and quit, just keep moving in the direction that you want to go. I guarantee you, I promise you, you're going to get further down that road, further than you could ever imagine, and it's going to look different than you could imagine, and you're going to find other places you want to go, and you're going to know 
that you can get there because you won't quit. All right, so what is the best cane self-defense technique, the best cane self-defense move? What is the best self-defense move with a walking cane? I don't know. What is it to you? I, I do know what it is for me. But that, again, that changes. What if you get, what if you trip? What if you get knocked to the ground? Now you're lying on your back. They're getting ready to jump on you, to jump up and stomp you down. They're wearing Doc Martens. They're going to try to kick your head in and you're on your back. That's a whole different situation, right? You'll find the answer though. And in the moment, you will always discover the best self-defense move with your walking cane. When you keep your mind focused on what targets can you remove or destroy, and then you just go all in. Remember the fight's not over till you win. Keep fighting, keep 